You can comfortably count on just one hand the number of managers who have made a greater contribution to the English game than Arsene Wenger. The Frenchman revolutionised footballers' diets, training regimes and all-round professionalism on these shores, in addition to introducing a whole new style of play. The end result was a myriad of trophies and severe disruption to Sir Alex Ferguson's dominance at Manchester United, not to mention the first unbeaten top-flight league campaign in English football since the very first Football League season all the way back in the 1880s. Before that, Wenger had spent 12 years in management with Nancy, Monaco and Nagoya Grampus, most notably winning the league and title in 1988. This video is part of a wider series taking a look at the best and worst signings ever made by a plethora of high-profile managers. And I must say that with the exception of the Pep Guardiola video, it seems as though HITC7 subscribers much prefer a look at a manager's best ever signings than their worst signings. I think we can deduce from that that HITC7 subscribers are overwhelmingly positive people, but with a slightly irrational underlying hatred of Pep Guardiola. Anyhow, the usual rules apply. Best signings based on a multitude of factors, not just the best players Wenger signed, etc, etc. I must say, particularly in his early years at Arsenal, Wenger was a wizard in the transfer market, and some seriously impressive pieces of business have to miss out. Without further ado though, here are Arsene Wenger's 7 best signings of all time. Mark Overmars Mark Overmars is one of a handful or more players from the 1990s who doesn't quite seem to get the recognition that he fully deserves. Sensationally quick, brilliant on the ball, and capable of beating you down the flank or cutting back inside, Gary Neville called Overmars the best winger he ever came up against. And if you rewatch the 1998 charity Shield, you'll understand why. A Champions League winner with Ajax in 1995, Overmars only spent three scenes with Arsenal, but the fact that supporters still voted him as the club's 12th greatest player of all time in 2008 should give you some idea of the impression that he made during that time. Whilst Overmars was undoubtedly a world-class wide man who gave his best years to the Gunners, his performances at Harby alone would not be enough to earn him a place in this seven. Overmars was only Arsene Wenger's sixth signing in North London, arriving from Ajax for a fee of £7 million. Following 41 goals in 141 appearances, Overmars was hot property, and both Lazio and Barcelona began to show an interest. In the end, Barca managed to sign both Overmars and Emmanuel Petit from Arsenal for a combined total of £32 million. Overmars accounted for £25 million of the deal, equivalent to $37.5 million at the time, and the transfer made him the fourth most expensive signing of all time back in 2000 and he remains, by far, Arsenal's most lucrative sale of all time when adjusted for inflation. In short, Overmars was a bargain who gave three incredible years to Arsenal, and his lucrative sale gave Arsene Wenger the rocket fuel to make further shrewd investments in the transfer market. It's just a shame it didn't work out for the Dutchman at Barcelona, where he, like so many players with blistering pace, began to suffer from pain-inducing recurring injuries. Cesc Fabregas the youngest inclusion in this seven, in terms of the age they were when Arsene Wenger signed them, Cesc Fabregas, joined Arsenal on a free transfer in 2003, aged only 16. In his debut campaign, in which Arsenal were invincible across 38 games in the Premier League, Fabregas' only appearances came in the League Cup. However, the following season, still aged only 17, Fabregas began to establish himself at Highbury. One of the most talented teenage footballers of a generation, it is mind-boggling that Barcelona didn't do more to stop Fabregas from departing, since there were no secrets surrounding his talents during his time in the La Masia Academy. Fabregas quickly went about proving Barca what a mistake they had made, showing signs that he could run the Arsenal midfield before he was even old enough to buy a bottle of WKD. Fabregas went on to play more than 300 games for Arsenal, captaining the club and becoming a World Cup winner, all by the age of 24. A genuinely world-class playmaker, Fabregas could have become one of Arsenal's greatest players of all time, but the law of a return to Catalonia proved to be too great. In the end, he departed for a fee of 34 million euros, which is roughly 34 million euros more than Arsenal paid for him. An incredible signing who is restricted to sixth, largely by virtue of the fact that Arsenal won very little during his time at the club. Robert Pires much like Mark Overmars, Robert Perez is another wide man who I don't think quite gets the recognition that he deserves, albeit Perez played his best football in the 2000s rather than in the 1990s, and he was a completely different type of winger to Overmars. Perez was actually signed by Arsene Wenger in the summer of 2000 as a replacement for Overmars, joining the Gunners in a £6 million move from Marseille. 
Capable of playing on either flank, and later on in his career as a number 10, Pires didn't quite have the blistering pace of Outhamas, but he was arguably even more graceful, even better on the ball, and he had magnificent vision. Perez's combination play with the likes of Henri and Bergkamp defined the rhythm of Arsenal's play and what made them so devastating for a number of years. Perez spent six scenes at Arsenal, winning two Premier League titles and making the PFA Team of the Year thrice. Ryan Giggs only made the cut twice during that same period of time and I've often felt Perez ought to be talked about in the same bracket as players of Giggs' calibre. Perhaps not in terms of longevity, but certainly in terms of talent. Perez was later voted Arsenal's sixth greatest player of all time, and the fact that he only spent six scenes at the club, which is less than some inclusions, along with the fact that he left for nothing, are the only reasons that stopped him from finishing even higher in this seven. Sol Campbell Talking about players who don't get the respect that they deserve, Sol Campbell comes close to the top of that particular tree during the modern era of the English game. Sol Campbell is one of the greatest centre-backs that English football has ever produced, and he was among the outstanding defenders of his generation worldwide. A phenomenal athlete and a brilliant reader of the game, Campbell absolutely deserves to be talked about in the same bracket as John Terry and Rio Ferdinand, yet he very rarely is. Back in 2001, Campbell was arguably the finest centre-back within the English game, making it all the more extraordinary when he left Tottenham in a move to the club's North London rivals, free of charge. Spurs fans were understandably enraged, but from an Arsenal perspective, they had just pulled off the signing of the century. Campbell spent five scenes at Highbury, the key cog, in an ironclad back line for the first three, before suffering a couple of injury setbacks in the latter two. Campbell didn't spend as long at Arsenal as some of the other players in this seven, and he had no sell-on value, but to sign a player of his calibre for nothing from your most bitter rivals, and for him to go on to become the linchpin in the best defence in the league during an invincible Premier League title-winning season, yeah, that's not a bad piece of business, is it? Freddie Lundberg Arsene Wenger certainly has an eye for a winger, it would be fair to say, and arguably his most impressive recruit on the flanks was Freddie Lundberg. It's worth noting on that point that Lundberg actually played as a number 10 in Sweden for Halmstad prior to his move to Highbury, but he transitioned beautifully to playing out wide, whether it be on the left or right side. Signed for just £3 million in 1998, it took the diminutive Swede roughly 12 months to really settle into life in England and adjust to the speed and physicality of the Premier League, in addition to playing in a new position. Once he settled, Lundberg was outstanding there. In many respects, his tactical intelligence, industriousness and technique epitomised what made Arsenal such a formidable team during his nine years at the club. Lundberg played more than 300 games for Arsenal in total, he won the Premier League Player of the Season award for the 2001-02 campaign, and he has subsequently been voted Arsenal's 11th greatest player of all time. He left on a free for West Ham, but that hardly counts against him, given he cost just £3 million and gave nine years of service to Arsenal. So, the underwear modelling recent interim Arsenal boss takes bronze in this seven. George Weir you could be forgiven for having forgotten by this stage that Arsene Wenger ever managed anyone other than Arsenal, but the Frenchman spent roughly 41% of his managerial career outside of North London. That doesn't mean I've given a token inclusion to a pre-Arsenal signing, oh no, George Weir ranks above the likes of Mark Overmars and Robert Pires fully on merit. Undoubtedly one of the finest African footballers of all time, and the only African to have won the Ballon d'Or, Weir made a name for himself scoring prolifically in Liberia in the mid-1980s. In 1986, he won his first caps for the national team, and Liberia's French head coach Claude Leroy told Arsene Wenger that he should take a look at him. Wenger was managing Monaco at the time, and after flying to Liberia to watch Weir in action, Monaco were all too happy to stump up the £12,000 required to bring Weir to the club. Whilst Wenger had been impressed by Weir, he admitted that he was surprised by how quickly the forward took to life in Ligue 1. He was named as the African Player of the Year in his debut campaign, and he went on to score 66 goals in 149 games for the club, before departing for PSG in a deal worth more than €6 million Euros in 1992, a considerable fee at that time. Honourable Mentions as I said in the introduction, Arsene Wenger has amassed a pretty phenomenal portfolio of signings over the decades, so a quick set of honourable mentions is required. The signings who came closest to featuring were probably Emmanuel Petit, Colo Torre, Gilberto Silva, Jens Lehmann, and Robin Van Persie. 
Further honourable mentions go to the likes of Glenn Hoddle, Patrick Battiston, Nwanku Kanu, Aaron Ramsey, Laurent Koscielny, Santi Carzola, Rob Holding, Hector Bellerin, Olivier Giroud, Nicolas Anelka, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, and even Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, primarily in terms of the fee that Arsenal paid for him and then received for him in that last case. Before we come to top spot, just a quick note, since I can anticipate a touch of confusion among some in the comments, that Arsene Wenger didn't actually sign Patrick Vieira or Dennis Bergkamp. Both players joined Arsenal before his arrival, albeit only a matter of weeks before in Vieira's case, and it has been speculated that Wenger had some say in his arrival. Nonetheless, he wasn't technically signed by Wenger, and therefore he cannot feature. Now for someone who can feature though, and indeed the last player to feature, as we come to top spot. Thierry Henry. As predictable a top spot as you are ever likely to see in one of my videos, of course Thierry Henry is Arsene Wenger's best ever signing, and he is up there with the best signings in the history of the English game, if not beyond. I said Wenger had an eye for a winger, and indeed that is where Henry played prior to his arrival in North London. In fact, during his difficult spell at Juventus prior to joining the Gunners, Henry even deputised as a wingback on occasion. Wenger already knew Henri well prior to signing him at Arsenal, having had him as an academy player at Monaco. Following his struggles in Syria, Arsenal signed Henri for £11 million in the summer of 1999, as a replacement for his international teammate Nicolas Anelka, who joined Real Madrid for more than twice that amount. With hindsight, that appears to be the deal of the century, but Arsenal and Wenger weren't without their critics for the business at the time. Whilst others, even others in this seven, took time to adjust to life in a new league, Henri was an instant success at Arsenal, scoring 26 goals in his debut campaign. He went on to score 226 goals in 370 games across eight seasons in North London, becoming Arsenal's all-time record goalscorer, as well as setting a record for the most assists by any player in a single Premier League season, which has since been tied, but not beaten, by Kevin De Bruyne. To my mind, Henri is the greatest player of the Premier League era. He is Arsenal's greatest player of all time, and having been signed for £11 million, he was sold for roughly twice that amount to Barcelona. An incredible signing all round, and a pretty safe bet for top spot, I think. So that's it for today's video, but thank you all as ever for watching. Let us know your thoughts down below in the comments, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and you can subscribe and turn on notifications should you wish to see more videos from me in the future. Oh, and if you're really a fan, you can also find me on Twitter or Instagram via the username at HITC7s.